Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 20th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today took a look at another piece of malware that uses the coronavirus as its lure. Now, this, of course, is becoming quite common now. This email claims to come from the World Health Organization, but actually uses info at who.org as from address. This particular domain actually has an SPF entry that it will never be used to send email and the valid domain or the official domain for the World Health Organization is who.int. Regardless, it includes the usual word attachment with macro that's then used to download additional malware and Xavier will be talking more about this particular malware in a future post. And Cisco today fixed five vulnerabilities in its SD-WAN products. Uh, Three of these vulnerabilities are rated high, allowing approach escalation, command injection, and then also a buffer overflow vulnerability. Now, teaching our Defending Web Application class right now, it's also nice to note that the two medium vulnerabilities are a cross-site scripting and, yes, a SQL injection vulnerability. Now, the reason why the first three vulnerabilities are only rated high, not critical, is in part that they do require authentication. An attacker, for example, first needs command line access in order to, for example, launch the command injection vulnerability. So no need to panic yet, uh, but certainly something you do want to patch. Now, as part of the last patch, Tuesday, Microsoft fixed CVE 2020-0881. This was a remote code execution vulnerability in the Windows Graphics Device Interface, or GDI. Now, Microsoft, of course, released these patches for currently supported versions of Windows, like Windows 10, uh, but Windows 7 turns out to be also vulnerable to this problem. Of course, Windows 7 no longer receives public uh, free patches like these newer operating systems. In order to kind of fill this gap, Syrup Patch, a company that has developed what they're calling micro patches, essentially small sort of binary patches that are sort of applied to software, is now trying to sell patches for Windows 7. And they just released a patch for this GDI vulnerability to its paying customers. Uh, Now, of course, Microsoft also has a for pay program that will still get you patches for Windows 7. So not sure exactly whether it's worth to sign up with yet another vendor to get uh, these patches, but at least there is now uh, some options that you have available if you're still running Windows 7. And if you are getting excited by interesting covert channels, then I recommend that you read the blog post by Rindert Kramer from the NCC group. He came up with an interesting way to use LDAP attributes as a covert channel. The reason he picked LDAP was that the network that he was uh, looking at as part of a pen test here was uh, pretty well segmented. So there wasn't really too much he could do to get messages from one part of the network to another part of the network. But then, of course, LDAP being part of Active Directory was sort of the shared protocol that could get anywhere because all these different segments needed LDAP for authentication. So he came up with a protocol that used LDAP attributes to exchange messages. Of course, whenever you sort of use an existing protocol like this to develop a covert channel, you're somewhat restricted by the basic properties of this protocol. LDAP attributes have a fairly limited maximum size. So what he had actually to do is he had to fragment the messages that he would send in order to have a viable channel going here. So pretty interesting uh, blog post I find 
Maybe not 100% sort of applicable to current threats, uh, but I'm sure bad guys are reading it too, and they may be experimenting with messages like this in your network next. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.